Paul Broder. Paul and I have been colleagues for a long time, having right. worked together, and right. of course, so my friends from Medford and a few folks having a breakfast in Dempsey's. So. Uh, Mrs. Coakley, how do you react to this picture? Uh, Four we, days away, 20 points ahead. You, you know what? We're not paying any attention to that because I know uh, from experience that we have to work every day until Tuesday. We're not going to rest until the last vote is counted on Tuesday, which is why we're kicking off three days to go around Massachusetts again at coffee shops. We're headed to New Bedford. We've got a lot of stops today, and we're going to continue to work right through until the polls close on Tuesday. But during those four, four days, what will be uh, the specific message for the voters? The message is the same one that we started here last September at Dempsey's, which is Massachusetts can be prosperous and fair. We can dig ourselves out of this recession and turn the economy around for everybody, not just Boston and Cambridge and not just people at the top, by investing in our kids, our workforce, our infrastructure, and making sure that as we are able to, across the state, align where those jobs of the future are going to be, roll out a red carpet for business, make sure we cut through red tape, make sure that our kids and our workforce are ready for those jobs, including skills in computer science. I know we can do that. I talk to people all over the state who are excited about it, about getting a fair shot about good education for everybody. We can do this here in Massachusetts. I know people here, voters believe that, I believe it. Talking about, you know, uh, creating jobs, it seems uh, that economic uh, inequality will be the biggest challenge for the next governor. How do you plan to solve this? It is the biggest challenge, and I think not just in Massachusetts, but across this country. I heard this morning that only the top several Percent, the top percent of people have seen a growth in income in the last several years. That means for the middle class and for particularly people who are struggling with minimum wage jobs uh, or less than that, trying to feed a family, trying to pay their rent. We need to do better to level that playing field. We've raised the minimum wage here. It's a good start. We need to give people earned sick time. And more importantly, we need to impress upon businesses here in Massachusetts that we can be prosperous and fair. We can treat our workers well. I think we had a good lesson from Market Basket this summer about what happens when employees are included in the business model, when employees feel they're given a fair shot. That's when businesses do well. That's what I believe is governor, and that's why I think we'll be able to get and keep businesses here in Massachusetts. Since the beginning of this campaign, you lay out a very nice you know, uh, plan for economic development, development, where the money will be coming from. Well, the economic development plan really relies upon uh, making sure businesses can come and grow here. We've seen a growth in business and revenue from them in the last several quarters. We can continue that to begin with. The plan I've laid out really focuses on an investment by the state of half a billion dollars over the next 10 years to promote infrastructure across the Commonwealth. That includes Hamden County and Berkshire County, where I grew up, Merrimack Valley, uh, to make sure that we complete our transportation projects. Uh, I know we're looking to get the green line out here to Medford. Uh, and that, that, that will be key. Uh, the South Coast Rail, we're headed to New Bedford later today, getting those projects finished. But my plan also includes allowing for competitive grants in regions across the state that with our business community, our residents, our academic communities, um, they're going to be able to work with the state as a partner to say what's going to be successful. Mayor Morse in uh, Holyoke said, hey, I would, I would apply to get the Victory Theater redone. We can use it for developing curricula around computer STEM education. Um, for health sciences, health uh, care in Massachusetts, where we lead the country in providing access, uh, is also a big employer here. And we can, with that competitive grant, make sure in regions where they want to see growth, we'll make sure that those schools get the education and the workforce, people will get those jobs. We, we, we see on education, uh, during the past eight years, uh, a lot of progress has been made uh, to reduce you know, the ac ac academic you know, achievement gap. But still, a lot of students are struggling, depending on where they live. How do you plan you know, to solve this? Well, we've talked a lot about that as Democrats on the trail. And I believe, if I am the Democratic nominee and I hope the next governor, that my investment will be in making sure that your education doesn't depend on your zip code, that we will close that achievement gap, particularly in our gateway cities, but not limited to that. Look, we've made a lot of improvements. We know we need to fund early education, pre-K for students. We know that when we have a longer structured school day, kids get that 
science, technology, engineering, math, and a little bit of arts and music thrown in, which in recess is a good thing. But we know what works. And if we can invest in, uh, as I've supported lifting a cap on charters and our pilot and innovation schools, making sure that the best practices we've seen from those schools, we also apply to our district schools. We can make that investment and be successful. That's a key. Um, Steve Grossman says that he would be a better general election nominee because he's actually created jobs. He's not vulnerable to the kinds of charges that he believes you would be against Charlie Baker. We've been in a very competitive Democratic primary for the last several months over a year. We had five good people. We have three good people now. The Massachusetts voters have a great choice on Tuesday. I've laid out a plan of investing in our kids, our workforce, lowering health care costs, lowering energy costs, the economic plan that I've just talked about, competitive growth all over the state. I believe voters do get to choose who will be the best nominee for Democratic governor. And part of that calculus is who is going to stand up to the Republican, which we assume is Charlie Baker. We don't know that, but I'll be ready on September 10th if I'm the nominee. And I know all the Democrats will be working together to make sure we get out our message of equality, opportunity, and a fair shot at a you good job. You will get Steve Grossman's supporters? I believe I will. A lot of them seem still to be somewhat disappointed in 2010. Yeah, you know, look, these primaries, uh, there's a lot of energy. We've had a lot of back and forth. What I am comfortable, and I've said uh, I will be behind whoever the nominee is. I believe all of my competitors will also be standing strong on September 10th to make sure that we have a Democratic governor, that we continue the progress we've made under Governor Patrick. He's invested in innovation and infrastructure and education. That's where our success is. That's where our future lies. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, and I believe I'm well prepared to win on Tuesday and to go on and win in November. Thank you, everybody. Have Thank a you, great everyone. day. Thanks. All right. Paul, good to see you. Yeah, take care. Yeah, I know.